Those 19 losses had come at the hands of Miami. Rock Berlin. Firing for Ryan Moore. They seem to be taking care of that hokey coverage in the early going. Finding some seams. Here's John Petty's field goal attempt. What did the Hokies do? Block Frank Beamer's they Frank Beamer, they block kicks. Miami kept off the board. Miami now with Roscoe Parrish coming on the end around. A little bit of a reverse right here. Just look at the great defensive play. Individual effort right here. D'Angelo Hall takes it off, picks it up by himself, takes it back to the house. 28 yards. Virginia Tech had done nothing on offense at that point, Reese. So Miami tried to spark themselves with a little trickeration. Beautifully executed and don't. Oh, Kevin Avery cannot hold up. This is reminiscent of Ernest Wilford dropping the two-point conversion for Virginia Tech against Miami a couple years ago. But Kevin Jones was magnificent against the Miami Demons. Here, just ripping through the middle of the defense in front of Miami, picking up a big first down for Virginia Tech, and again, right through the middle of the defense, cuts to the right side, look at him go down the sidelines, another first down for Virginia Tech. Kevin Jones over 100 yards against that hurricane defense, still just a 10-0 game, but then Brock Berlin, ill-advised, stepped in front, Eric Green, Pick six. Hey, the Hokies and Canes each came in with eight non-offensive touchdowns, best in the nation. That's now ten for the Hokies with two in this game. Do I hear 11? Michael Crawford. Michael Crawford here, just an ill-advised pass. He's just trying to throw it away. Nice pick, though. Gets it all the way down the ten-yard line. That defense of the Hokies playing so well. And that got Berlin benched, and Kevin Jones pounding it in. 24-0. Officials get the goal post down before the crowd can get out here. This thing sort of turned chippy and ugly at at the end as Miami sees its 39 game regular season winning streak come to an end and 31-7 is the final. Larry Coker loses a regular season game for the first time and he lost it to Frank Beamer. You kind of find out a lot about people when your backs are to the wall and things are not very, uh, no one's saying very good things about you and people trashing you a little bit on TV and, uh, and um, you know, I, tried, I, I usually don't read or listen or look, but I, I did hear a couple comments about us here. And uh, to come back and perform the way we did against a great football team, I'm, I'm just, you know, I think it's a, it's a great win for the program. Highest ranked team the Hokies have ever beaten. So number two didn't survive. What about number three waiting in the wings? Hey, SC's Rose Bowl chances also hinged on how they played against Washington State. Matt Kegel finding Scott Lundy. Trojans have grabbed a 3-0 lead. And then Kegel, first play in the second quarter, DeMar Darling. Wazoo up 7-3, but here comes Herschel Dennis. The question was, how would USC responded? Well, they just gave the ball to Herschel Dennis. Look at the beautiful moves on the outside. In for the end zone, touchdown. USC up 10-7 at that point. And then the Wild Bunch 2 came up with some quarterback pressure. And just penetration, getting to the quarterback, the entire defensive front. No time for Matt Kegel here. Pressured the entire day. Tremendous job by the defensive front of USC. And there's Nasal coming off tackle, getting a sack of Kegel, and he was really shaken up. They came after him time and time again, and then they couldn't even get the snap, Reese. Well, just miscues. Washington State has now gone eight straight games with at least a dozen penalties, and they had a couple of snaps over the punter's head. That only turned into five points, though. Still 15 to 10 when Matt Liner finds Steve Smith. What class is Steve Smith? Well, he's a freshman, Reese. They are young, they are loaded, and they are dangerous. Here's some more trickery with Mike. Mike Williams. Mike Williams is a youngster, too. He's a lefty. He's going to flip it out there to Greg Gunther for a good game. Flag, by the way, penalty was naturally on Washington State. Penalty's always on Washington State. Matt Liner connects with Mike Williams for the touchdown. And Pete Carroll's squad starting to pull away. Liner now dumping it out on a little pass. And Carroll's team pulled away in this game. They converted four turnovers into 24 points. Wazoo now 1 and 12 against top three opponents all time. 43 to 16 is the final in the game. Boy, I tell you what, you compare the Heisman Trophy winner from last year, Carson Palmer. He was so important to that USC resurrection, but his numbers just aren't that much better than Matt Lyons at this point. He has been a brilliant fill in, and while the Trojans, Trojans should be number two in the polls. They ought to have the inside track now to go on to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. But there's always that question. What if they hadn't blown the cow game? 
you know, we just stunk that day, you know? We just stunk. We played lousy football. We were, it didn't matter where you looked. We just were lousy. And, and I did a terrible job of getting us ready to go. And the guys played lousy and we coached lousy and it stunk. Miles went on to praise the Sooners, but that was conveniently left out to motivate Oklahoma to put the beat down on the Pokes, who had beaten them two straight years. Dan Cody, weren't even sure Dan was going to play. Tatum Bell, ill-advised, tried to pick up the fumble, couldn't scoop it up, led to a Sooner field goal. Jason White, Heisman Trophy candidate, finding Jawan Rankins along the sideline. That is worth another beat, guys. That's some dandy footwork right there. Just takes one in college, as we know. Kiwan Jones slamming it in. Boomer Sooner starting to roll. Up 10 0. Paying customer. Yes, I, I would say that's an yeah. accurate sign. They are so good, it's scary. Another good drive. Early in the second quarter, 17 0 OU. And that Sooner D. Much better than advertised. Keep an eye on number 94. Defensive tackle Dusty Dvorak right here. Just whips the center, goes around and gets penetration in the backfield. Bam, right there. Stops the running back in the backfield. No. He's fired up, but take a look at defensive end Dan Coney coming off the corner. The left tackle, poor techniques, dips his shoulders right there, bang, gets to the quarterback That's again. Technique, That's Dan terrific Coney. technique for him. But Rashawn Woods tries to get going on this screen and can't get it done. The OU defense today, four sacks, two interceptions, two fumble recoveries, and they held Oklahoma State to 62 yards and pass. Defense was awesome, but so was the run game. Look here, this is Keywan Jones, just right up the middle, great blocking, 10 yards, and then how about Ronaldo Works, guys? I mean, see the inside handoff here, really not a lot of there makes a couple moves 21 yards sets up another touchdown to me the story of the game yes jason white was great 50 carries 221 yards rushing for oklahoma and stoops always has a little bag of tricks and they certainly weren't going to take the boot off the throw to the post at this point bradley to clayton on the reverse pass for the touchdown and then white just gets scissored didn't stop him from dropping a perfectly thrown ball on brandon jones jason white didn't strike the post, didn't stick a finger in the air, and that would appear to be a cowboy who's beaten, or so I'm told, or so I'm shown. Yeah. 52 to 9. The Sooners hang half a hundred on the post, and, and well, the Aggies just didn't have a good day in Norman, as they used to be called. 52 to 9. However, the college game day guys, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Kirkstreet, saw the demolition boys, for a meltdown against number two scoring defense in the nation. Of course, part of that problem may be the reason the number two scoring defense is they haven't seen Vince Young. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Vince Young was a story here, guys. But look at Roy Williams right here. We know about his ability to catch the ball, but is he a team player? Yes. Look at him block on the outside. Get one. Give me two. Vincent Young looks great. He's going to score a touchdown. Yes, he has speed, but Roy Williams is the reason he scored that touchdown. He ran for 163 yards on the day, and that gave Cedric Benson plenty of running room. Guys, have we seen Cedric Benson run better than he did on Saturday? No. That was a simple answer. Here is more from the governor. Uh, want me to get that? Absolutely. He did. Plasma coming down. 31 to 7. Texas over Nebraska. Couple of guys going over 100 yards. The governor turning in three touchdowns as Nebraska has handed its second conference loss, the second loss of the season. And as a result, now everybody in the Big 12 North now with a pair of losses. Nebraska already lost to Missouri, as you know. Date with Kansas State later. Oklahoma showing the way in the Big 12 South. In the Big Ten, Michigan and Michigan State. Spartans coming in as the only team with a zero in the loss column. Big Ten play. Lloyd Carr getting his team ready. He's getting his team ready by running the ball. And they had a little bit of a tough break, did the Spartans, by losing Greg Yeaster on the inside. I don't know if that was the total reason that Michigan was able to exploit the middle, but exploit the middle they did with Chris Perry after that. And if you're able to run it, you're able to throw it. Throw it. If you can get Braylon Edwards one-on-one -on -one to the outside, you've got to throw him the football. And look at Chris Perry, though, guys. I mean, this is, this is Chris Perry. Tough yards after contact. Should have been tackled about five yards before that. Just another run right up the middle. The offensive line, huge holes, Mark. And look at this. Great cuts by Perry. Tremendous vision. Look at him switch the ball. That's what I love about him. He's a smart runner.
Not Bianca Batuka, not Wolfold, not Lytle, not the eight train, not Wheatley. Nobody carried the ball in a game for Michigan more than Perry did. And there is Mennery. Andy Mennery catching the touchdown pass is 20 to 10. Navarre going back up top, threading the needle to Edwards, 27 to 10. And with this carry, that broke the school record. He wound up with 51 carries on the game, did Perry. And still the Spartans wouldn't quit. Robert Flagg, the big hit. He plays Bandit, Clifford Dukes, it was the Duke, plays the hero position, and he gets the Spartans right back in. Still plenty of time to go, 27 to 20, but now time is running out. This, the Spartans' last chance. Smoker heaves it for the end zone. More than 200 passes Smoker had thrown without a pick. But Scott McClintock gets that one to seal the deal for Michigan. 27 to 20, the Wolverines go into the Spartans' house. They are able to handle business. Perry said he needed a hot tub, and he's got one in his apartment. Well, isn't that convenient? We're sitting right there for him, try to work out the bumps and the bruises. They have a week off. Lloyd Carr, happy that he was able to drive that vehicle known as Chris Perry. Controls its destiny in the Big Ten. Ohio State could, too, if they can handle Penn State. But Alan Zemitis has Zemitis touch. Pick six against Craig Krenzel. 78 yards. And Joe Pustin trying to avoid a five-game losing streak. They get it. And then Krenzel takes a big hit. Knocked out and did not return. And Penn State did a nice job of getting pressure. Obviously, the sternum injury there. But Scott McMullen came in. And this was the questionable call. Ben Harstock at tight end. Did he catch the ball? Did he catch the ball? These Let's are big ten reps again. And it's a Penn State game, so I've got to say that the likelihood is that they missed the call. Why does this always happen to Penn State? Obviously did not catch the ball. Well, it wasn't intentional, along. but this this time he did catch the ball. That was Michael Jenkins. Five-yard touchdown, gave the Buckeyes a one-point lead. Here's David Kemble from 60 to try to win it and missed it by that much in Happy Valley. And once again, Joe, not the beneficiary of a call. I could tell you five things in that game that I, you know, and I'll have a lot of them, the commissioner telling me I'm not supposed to open my mouth. I'm just supposed to take it. And, all right, you, you saw the thing. You saw the replay. You, you, you write about it. Don't ask me to get into it, all right? I got enough problems as it is. Well, those problems include a five-game losing streak. First time that's happened at Penn State. And, and I, I know it's not intentional, but boy, they have had a career's worth of calls go against them the last couple of years. The Big Ten standings now. You see the four teams with only one loss. But the two powers at the top are the two that control their destiny. Everything holds for them. They went out and they meet the winner. Like Vince Dooley, you know, back when Georgia used to dominate Florida, it seems like eons ago, especially to the dogs. The Mighty Gators going to the freshman Chris Lee, who throws a perfect pass to Ben Troop, led to a field goal, 3 0. Mighty Gators. From Florida, just the pressure they got all day on David Green. Look here, I mean, Channing Crowder, the freshman, great sack. And then you're going to see Ray McDonald just right up the middle. Never let David Green get comfortable. And then the third sack, Travis Harris. Look at the pounding of David Green right there. Pressure all day against Georgia. And Kiwan Ratliff, as a result of some pressure, making his sixth pick in the last three games that killed a Georgia drive. Remember, they were getting his pressure without Bobby McRae, the SEC sack leader who was suspended for this game. Here's Lee showing poise, showing savvy, showing guile, finding Seattle phase on. Lee, a little quick screen. Carlos Perez jetting down the sideline. First touchdown of the game about halfway through the third. Gators up by seven. Leak again going for the youngster Dallas Baker big playmaker Dallas Baker led to a field goal at 13-3 but David Green never gives up and Michael Johnson comes up large on the big stage the freshman Craig Lumpkin best day of his young career and now it's only a three-point game here's Billy Bennett the boot of virtues ties the game at 13 but here comes the final drive with the freshman at the wheel and an outstanding job this is the poise of a freshman making play on this drive, conducting the offense like it's an orchestra, moving his team down the field, rolling right, rolling left, settling in the pocket, putting the ball down to his tight end, Ben Troop. Now here, this is pressure. You've got to get a first down. He fires it out, puts it only where his wide receiver can make the catch by the sideline. And now it's just over half a minute to go. Matt Lee, toe meets leather, high enough, long enough, straight enough, and the Gators do it for the 13th time in 14 years. They beat the dogs, 
16 to 13. Death, taxes, Florida beats Georgia. Why can't Georgia beat Florida? Because they're in their heads. You think Sports so? psychologists said this week that if you believe there's a jinx, there is. It's a crocodile. Uh, they, all, they did certainly have some injuries, and now the scenario that Trev loves has an opportunity to unfold. If Georgia, Florida, and Tennessee all end the season with two losses, as they have now in conference play, we'll go all the way through the tiebreakers and get to the bottom, which is a vote of the athletic directors who are not directly involved in the SEC championship game to determine the representative from the East. No politics there. Wouldn't that just be like, oh, I'm sure no personal oh, rancor oh. involved at all. The only team with no losses in SEC play, the Ole Miss Rebels against South Carolina. Eli Manning to Chris Collins, 7-0. Now in a 21-14 game, Dondrell Pinkins, now he throws this away. This is a horrible call. Terrible. I mean, horrific. Clearly, Pickens is not in the end zone, and they close. call safety. He's not even close. And he's not close to being down. You're not saying I'm protecting the quarterback. This might be, that might be the worst call of the year because it cost him points. But meanwhile, Manning finds Kerry Johnson. Didn't seem to matter because it was 30-14, to 14, but now it's... 43-27 when Pinkins, who earlier this season thrown a 99-yard touchdown pass, now it's Matthew Thomas for 98 yards. And South Carolina suddenly Lou Holtz's team back in the game. The two-point conversion attempt. Pinkins can't get rid of the ball. Rebels still up by 10. Here's Pinkins again. Noah Whiteside. Oh, my goodness. The Rebels are seeing it slip away at 43-40. Gamecocks kicked off instead of attempting the onside kick. Eli Manning sneaks for the first down. And hotty, hotty, gosh almighty, look at this. Rebels are still unbeaten in the SEC. Boy, do they have a test coming up next week. They go to Jordan-Hare Stadium to take on Auburn. And Eli Manning has put himself right back in the thick to be considered for the Heisman Trophy. Ole Miss's defense isn't so great. Scrappy Manning continues to give them an opportunity to win. For Nick Saban, let's tip our hats to Nick Saban. He could have scored 100 points against Louisiana Tech if he'd wanted he to. He could have had 1,000 yards of offense. He's not a bully. Yeah. Had 49 points at halftime, That's called correct. off the Tigers, 49 to 10. LSU rolls on. So in the EC West, the wow. Bayou Bengals, a half game behind Ole Miss. Auburn won back in the lost column. Those three teams will fight it out. Stay. As someone observed, perhaps Notre Dame should just keep St. Jude, the patron saint of lost causes. They almost had Chris Ricks hemmed up back there. Instead, he heaves it down the field, and P.K. Sam is there, and Ricks is out of the shadow of his own goal post. And Crefonzo Thorpe, boy, this guy has just been burning it up lately. Over 200 yards receiving on Saturday. Seminoles are rolling to a big lead. Now up 23 to nothing. Ricks, Thorpe. 37-0, Florida State beats up on Notre Dame. And Notre Dame with its sixth loss now. But these three storied programs here, depending on how you want to add up national championships, you take all the ones that these three schools claim. You have 28 national championships among them. And for the first time ever, Notre Dame, Penn State, and Alabama all have at least six losses. Love it so much they played a long, long time. Arkansas always plays overtime. During the second overtime, Alexis Bowengi, seven yards. Rich Brooks' team up by seven. Arkansas's turn now. Matt Jones. Does anybody else make that play? Jason Peters. We will play on into the third overtime. We will play through four and five, and now in the sixth overtime. Double speed limits on the board. Jay Load. Lorenzen's third rushing touchdown of the game all in overtime. Kentucky has to go for two, as you know, after the second overtime. Finds Tommy Cook. And now the Cats have put the Hogs in a hole. The overtime Hogs down eight. Never see a team come back and get all eight. Uh-oh. Now Arkansas has got six. And Jones almost sacked. Jones. George Wilson. Oh, he had to hang on to the bullet. Tied at 63. Hey, Tubby Smith and Stan Heath are jealous of all these points. They're the basketball coaches. Well, I knew Tubby, but I didn't know the Stan guy. Stan Heath is the Arkansas basketball coach. DeCorey Birmingham. 
going in. It is 71 to 63, and Lorenzen, oh, Lorenzen tried to do it with his feet, and just as they did a couple of years ago against Ole Miss, in the seventh overtime, the Hogs and the right Reverend Nutt has the Razorback congregation together with one accord as they rise up together and win. 71-63, matching the longest game in NCAA history. In fact, Arkansas has now played the three longest games in NCAA history, and officially in the record book, this is the highest scoring game ever combined team because that 1916 Georgia Tech Cumberland tilt, which was 222 to nothing in favor of the Jackets, is not in the record book. Utah and Air Force, first place in the Mountain West at State. Chance Harridge in overtime, Air Force up by seven. Ben Moa now from one yard out, and we're tied at 30. Uh, these guys might go Arkansas, Kentucky on us right before Barry Eyes in the three-minute drill. Harris Warren hauling in the pass from Alex Smith. But here comes Chance Harridge. Hey, look at Chance Harridge here, just rolls right, finding time, nine-yard touchdown pass right there, tied now again at 37, Reed. Alec Messerall pulling it in, and Anthony Butler for the Flying Falcons. Third overtime, we have reached the stage where you must go for two. Chance has a chance, chance, no chance. Now Utah's last chance on fourth and goal. Ben Moa, direct snap. Now Moa's not the quarterback. Alex Smith is the normal quarterback. Utah, Urban Meyer, the urban legends split Alex Smith out to the side. And oh, they let Moa throw it to Matt Hansen. Ball game, Utah in sole possession of first in the Mountain West. The inside track on the AXA Liberty Bowl. UCLA and Stanford. The fighting buddy Tevens. The fighting buddy Tevens against Utah, Powell. which had not lost the Pac-10 game. 90 yards. He houses it. Stanford on top, 14-7. Stanford not won a Pac-10 game. Now punting and going to get a bounce to go their way. Stanford would fall on it after touch the UCLA player. By definition. Live ball and able to recover it. Now Chris Lewis on the little play action. Chris Lewis will take it himself. Bruins, first Pac-10 loss, tied with USC and Washington State. 18th ranked Tennessee favored by 26, the deep six visiting Duke. Vols appear to have one eye on their trip to Miami next weekend. Tied at a six pack apiece in the third. Casey Clausen pass for six, dropped by James Banks. Ball settled for a field goal. Blue Devils in a position to beat a ranked team for the first time since 1994, but they'll lose that position in the fourth, down just three. Fumble the punt. Tennessee recovers. Duke never recovers. Ensuing drive. Clawson connects with Chris Hannon. Clawson wins his 30th game as a starter. Be the only other QB besides Peyton Manning with at least 30 wins. 23 6 Chestnut Hill visiting Boston College. That's Larry Fitzgerald. Touchdown catch in 13 games in a row. First quarter, Rod Rutherford. Finds Fitzgerald all the way to the five, set up a field goal. Rutherford threw for 329 yards. It's tied 3-3. Fourth quarter, more Rutherford, Juwan Walker, and then Walker's going to find Fitzgerald for the easy score. So Fitzgerald, just a sophomore, a touchdown catch in 14 straight games, breaking the NCAA record 24-13. Panthers beat BC. Well, here's the deal now. Fitzgerald's 14-game streak includes a bowl game touchdown. Charles Rogers, the former Michigan State receiver now with the Lions, has an official total of 13 straight games for the touchdown catch, but they don't count Rogers' bowl game touchdown officially, even though they do count Fitzgerald's bowl game catch, so really they should be tied for the record. What's the deal? Well, the NCAA didn't begin counting bowl stats until the 2002 season, so I hope we cleared that up for you. I'm, I'm completely lost. Over under in the Colorado-Texas Tech game was in the mid-80s. That's unheard of for those people that follow that type of thing. First quarter, first possession, B.J. Simmons picked. Simmons would throw four interceptions on Tech's First four possessions through five on the day, second quarter. Colorado punting. Top ten nominee, Wes Welker. Eighth career punt return for a score. A new Division I-A record. He had 211 all-purpose yards. 58 there. Tech would miss the extra point. Third quarter. Simmons going to find Welker. 13 yards. He passed the 4,000 career mark. And Texas Tech passes to a 26 20.
Back on campus, Ball State at Northern Illinois. Nation's third leading rusher, Michael LaBerner Turner. And watch Ball State bite on the play fakes to Turner. Second quarter, Cardinals all think that Turner's getting it. Quarterback Josh Haldy will just take it himself. Oh, that's like stealing. Down to the three. Haldy also 13 of 18 through the air. Next play. Now, we, only one guy doesn't bite on this play fake, and there he is. Haldy finds Pat Raleigh. Turner did actually play, rushed for 126 yards, scored three touchdowns. Northern Illinois bounces back from last week's big loss at Bowling Green. They win 48-23. Indiana and Minnesota, first quarter. Graham McFarland just decked by Justin Fraley, picked up by John Polonsky. You know, the Gophers had seven different guys score touchdowns. It's a team effort. Second quarter, how about Lawrence Moroni? 17-yard touchdown, he rushed for 164. The Gophers' most lopsided Big Ten win since 1949, 55-7. Illinois, Iowa, second quarter. Edgar Cervantes clearing a path for Fred Russell. This is your classic smash mouth Big Ten bruiser fullback. Russell, 94 yards, went over 1,000 for the season, a second straight 1,000-yard rushing season. Third quarter, Dustin Ward. Drilled by Matt Roth. Bob Sanders picks it up. Iowa wins 41-10. Oh, the Illini. They're 1-9, 0-6 in the Big Ten.